Hey, welcome to Fiber Town. I'm Emily, and this is episode 26. It's the 24th of July, 2013, and I'm glad to see you guys. I have Alice with me today. She's got an eye on this little cookie. Yep, and um, that's how I was able to get her up to here, so you could see her beautiful face. Yes, I see you down there. I see you. Okay. So, hey, I'm found on the internet as Chain of Fools or Fiber Town. And come and see the group on Ravelry, the Fiber Town Podcast group. There is an FO thread where you enter your monthly FOs, and I do a drawing for a pattern, $7. Miss Wooly Knits, she was the last winner, and she, I know I'm torturing you, she knit a hitchhiker in like two weeks. Okay, sit down, you're a very bad girl. Okay, shake. Nice girl. There. Yay. Yay. Yeah, you see the other ones over there. That's for later. All right, what else do I want to tell you? I have a few thank yous. Uh, first, um, let's see. Jackie, who is Knits Much, sent a donation, which is always very welcome. Thank you so much, Jackie. Um, makes everything a little easier. So I really appreciate it, and I'm sure other podcasters do as well. Also, to Renee Loves Yous, she left me a lovely iTunes review. Sorry, Alice is searching for more cookies. Um, so thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate that as well. Welcome to two people who introduced themselves in the welcome thread. We have Wen Mig, who is Wendy from New York, and Turtle Folk, who is Debbie from Virginia. Hey guys, and welcome. Okie dokie, so I have several things to show you and lots to talk about. Show and tell first, shall we? I've been weaving, and I've had a good time, finally, finally. So, I tried to copy Diana of Knittables with her socks that rock, lightweight, mirrored warp, scarves. And I tried it with the wrong heddle. Well, first it took me forever to find the pattern repeat so I could get the colors lined up in my warp. I used the wrong heddle, I had to take out all the warp, then I used the wrong size weft, I used a fingering, apparently I should have used a lace that's whatever she used in her project. And then I realized that the color wasn't right, and I didn't know why. The color of the weft was not right, and I didn't know why, because I thought it was a neutral, it was a gray. Um, and then I, I went on and I found as many of these scarves as I could, and what I found is that there are at least four colors in any of the socks at rock. And the weft color had to match, more or less, match one of those colors. So I was using a neutral, but it didn't match any of the colors in the warp. So I finally figured it out. And yes, it has its, sorry, I think I just got bitten. <laughs> sorry. There is a cookie on my laptop screen. Yes, I know. I know I didn't realize I would give you guys such good close-ups. Sit. Good girl. Stay. All right, so this is Socks That Rock, and it's full of weaving mistakes, but it's a start. Um, Socks That Rock, lightweight in the Water Lilies colorway, and that's the warp. So you can see I've lined up most of the greens, most of the oranges, most of the purples, and the purple, you know, one color will sort of bleed into the next. That's a lovely bit right there. And then the warp, sorry, the warp, not the warp, the weft, the horizontal bits are um, loft from Brooklyn Tweed. And I had this left over from making my mittens for me. And it's in the thistle colorway. And this is it right here. So it's a woolen spun, very spongy, easily broken. Okay, I can see that I'm going to have to get rid of the second cookie if we're going to have any peace. So, it's maybe not as squishy and soft as I would have liked. But I'm so happy to have it off my loom, and I knew I couldn't cut off the weft without really losing, without really losing it. And I could have maybe unraveled it somehow, but I persevered and I got something that I'm pretty happy with. So, excellent. And I'm going to have to do this other cookie because she's going nuts. Come here, baby. No, other way. Come on the other way. You're stepping on my fiber. Alice, come. Up. Good girl. All right, stay. 
I know, I know, I know. Can you do it on your nose? Stay. 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 Okay. Good girl. All right, that's it. I have no more cookies for you. Was it delicious? Okay. So that's my first woven scarf. <laughs> my second, all done, I swear. My second woven scarf is with hand spun. And I'm in love with this one. Again, it has lots of weaving mistakes, but I can live with it. It's just gorgeous. So for this one, I'll show you. Still very damp. Give you a better up close view. I used, again, scraps, and I tried the twisted, let me show you, the twisted, um, didn't work out too well, the twisted um, fringe, but I need to redo them when it's dry. Um, this is, the weft is out of Hobbledy Hoy Koi Classic Bats, and I had 145 yards of three-ply, and this was faux cashmere, tuss of silk, and super fine merino top. That's her list. And I have a ton left. I did not, I probably didn't even use half of what I had. So the warp is leftover handmade in sea silk. I can't remember what I made out of that. Gave it as a gift to somebody. And I just adore, it's very impressionistic looking, maybe Monet kind of. I don't think the camera's doing it justice, but I'm happy with it. It was a lot of fun. I did this, once I got it warped, once I warped the loom, it took me maybe two hours to weave it, maybe less. Very fast. Because it was kind of a, a bulky, a bulky um, hand spun. So excellent, that's my weaving, and I will be doing more of that. I love using my hand spun for weaving. Um, alrighty. I have a knitting effort. Ready to see the knitting FO, Alice? Yeah? Okay. It is the Wingspan. Out of fiber optic paint box gradient, bitter lime to rose. And I knit it on US size 4s. And I used my Chowgu red lace. And it is done. And I'm okay with it. I have to say, I'm surprised that I don't love it more. But I just don't. Colors are gorgeous. I ended up with the bitter lime here, and then I ran it all along the edge, which is what you do to finish the wingspan. And I modified the cast on is, you're supposed to cast on 90. It's a free pattern. It's cast on 90 stitches. I cast on 60 and made it significantly more narrow, more like a scarf and less like a shawl. So, what do you think, Al? Okay, there we go. So, it is cashmere, um, merino cashmere silk, and it's lovely. I don't know why I don't love it more. Maybe I'll grow to love it. I have not blocked it, and I don't intend to block it. It's nice, garter, squishy, stitchy. Um, I think part of it has to do with the fact that I use that magic knot thing. Um, either I should have maybe snipped the ends right away and just trusted in the magic knot. I did not do that. I left the ends hanging out. And I think that as I knit it, I don't know, it left sort of a gap in some of the places or a bump. I don't know if you can see that one right there. Right there. I don't know. And then I had a lot of ends to weave in and not it's not picture perfect it's not state fair enterable perfect it doesn't bother me but I don't know maybe it'll grow on me anyway that's my wingspan I really love that side right there okay that is my stash dash folks that last the wingspan has put wingspan has put me over my 43 something yards 
um, I need to enter that into my um, my post, and I will be done with stash dash. How about you, Alice? How was your stash dash? Was it good? Yeah. All right. That is it for FOs. I have some whips. They're not exciting. Old Town has not seen any love. My sock has gotten some progress, although I really wanted to finish that wingspan, so it didn't get a ton of work. But the heel is turned. Oh, great. I just lost all the stitches off any whole needle. That's like 20 stitches. Did you do it? Is it your fault? Okay, so the gusset is done. I'm onto the foot, and I will very carefully put that down and fix it later. Um, I need to do that next. I need to finish it. However, I need to start thinking about my next thing to knit because I'm going on a road trip soon, and I need a new shawl. I'm thinking about my Medusel yarn, the lace weight that I showed you all last week. I need a good pattern for or I need to make one up. I'm not sure yet, but so I'm I've sort of got imagine knitting as um, Vicky of Heartland it says sort of thinking about what to do. However, I do have my second Bella mitten, and where is that? Here it is. I just cast that on today. Remember, this was out of the Metuseld Alpaca Romney blend. There she is. Oops, that's on backwards. Second one is cast on. I have about 10 rows. Just a wee little thing. I think I'm going to get, oh, there's the first cable. I think I'm going to get two pairs of mittens out of that, that ball. It was an eight ounce ball of yarn. I weighed the first mitten. It weighed 50 grams and I have 155 grams left. So I think that's, that's an excellent deal for at least two pairs of mittens. Maybe something else small. Probably not. Uh, all right, Bella Mitten, Sock, Old Town. That's it for my whips. Um, but I do have lots of other stuff. I have tons of acquisitions. Um, and I'm just going to sort of intersperse them with me talking about outings that I did and things coming up. So, all right, so I went to the Uniquities Fiber Farmers Market in Vienna, Virginia last Saturday. And I got to meet um, Becky, who is Green Hood. Hey, Becky. Super nice meeting you. And I ran into Sharon, who's Squirrel Acre. Hey, Sharon. And she, uh, we were looking at some fibers and fleeces, and um, she said that she's been washing fleeces using a method called the fermented suint. She sent me a link. I haven't looked at it yet. But I think at, at its most basic, it involves leaving a fleece out in water, and it ferments. I have, as I said, I haven't looked this up, but it basically makes its own soap. You might have to do one, one rinse or one wash afterwards, but I'm going to check it out. So yeah, it was great seeing, um, seeing those guys and the market was lovely. The Spanish peacock wasn't there. I was expecting them, but gourmet stash was there. And I did get to talk to Kate and I had asked her, I had sort of pre-ordered a few colorways that I wanted to try and she was um, was really nice she brought them there and I went in basically five minutes after it opened and she was already sold out of Van Gogh and she her booth her, her setup was beautiful she had all her punies in little like vintage mason jars and let me just show you shall I I'll just show you so Here is my first colorway. This is Poonies in Space. I guess it's Pigs in Space. Look at that. And it's tied with this lovely twine. And then she gives a label in the shape of a mason jar where you can put your spinning info. Hand carded Poonies Alpaca Merino Silk. Gourmet Stash. A big mustache. It's my stash stash. Um, okay, I have a few more. This one is Sweet Sister from, you know, Game of Thrones. This is Alpaca Polworth Silk Merino Angelina. Oh! I'm gonna order Don't Wake the Dragon, which is, I believe, the same fiber, but it's a deeper purple. 
Isn't that amazing? Each of these is an ounce. Okay, there's more. I spent my whole budget at Gourmet Stash, and I have no regrets. Okay, this one is Merino BFL Silk, Chocolate Chianti. That is gonna make an amazing single. <laughs> they are so squishy and lovely. All right, I have another one. It's the last one. It's the last one of the Poonies. And I have been spinning on this colorway. This is in my a bag I'll have to show you all later. Okay. This is what's left of these guys. Ah, they're falling apart. All right. They're not falling apart. They're falling out of the bundle. Look at that. It's a gorgeous pink and gray and brown. It's called Sakura, which means cherry blossom, I believe, in Japanese. This is silk, merino, and sea cell. These spin so amazingly. Um, here's one. Oh, come here. I'll take one out of the bundle. Okay. These must be so labor intensive. I think she's absolutely mastered the art of making these. Look at that. It is the easiest thing to draft. It can spin very fine. It doesn't have to spin very fine. But it's just amazing. It's such a pleasure. It's heaven to spin these. <coughs> she also gave me, um, she has a new Lux Club coming out, and they're smaller. And this is the only one I can find. She gave me two, and I had it with me, and I've searched this area three times, and I can't find the other one. But they're amazing. Look at that. I don't remember if this was the alpaca silk or if this was yak silk, but she gave me an alpaca silk and a yak silk. And sorry, I have, I don't have dirty fingernails. That's just dye under my fingernail. Um, I can't tell you how amazing this feels. And it's just, it just shines. There we go. Just shines and I'm in love. Pardon me. Do you have any gray poupon? Anyway, yes, thank you, Kate. It's amazing. Oh, and look at this, such attention to detail. Um, since the Van Gogh was gone, she gave me this. Oh no, we sold out card. Gives you 5% off your next order. I mean, attention to detail, that's amazing. I did also fall down and buy some top, some combed top. Okay, so this was just two colors. Um, there's a neutral superwash merino, and oh shoot, I didn't bring the card. One is a merino, one is a BFL maybe? I don't know for sure, don't hold me to that. I could not resist. Look at that color. And she uses fibers dyed by amazing dyers. She doesn't do the dyeing herself, she sources it. From local dyers. This is from Carita of Neighborhood Fiber Company, who's based out of Maryland. And she uses Kate from Dragonfly Fibers, um, who has amazing stuff as well. And I think she uses somebody else I'm not familiar with. Um, and the reason I know all this is because I found out about a cool event from Kate, Kate Blaney of Gourmet Stash. And this is, she said, Are you going to Spin Quest? And I said, No, what's that? It's an event about an hour from west of my, where I live, <clears throat> in Front Royal, Virginia, excuse me. And it's run by somebody, um, I'm not sure who's behind the website, but the website is called spinartiste.com. This is what it looks like. Spinartiste.com. And they have a page with interviews of amazing fiber artists. Look at this, look at this page. These are, and the interviews are amazing. I read Kate's interview, I read an interview with Hobbledy Hoy, I read an interview with um, Loop, Steph Gorin from Loop, but just 
a whole huge list of fiber artists, and it shows pictures, tells they talk about their process, they talk about where they work, which I love to see photos of their workspaces and their studios. Um, highly recommend the site. Go check it out. And so anyway, Spin Artiste, I think you pay a flat fee, and it's basically, they don't explain it very well on the website, but from what I can gather, it's, it's like a spinning circle where you, you pay your fee and you are given fiber from different dyers and, excuse me, and preparers, such as Kate, and you see what you make that day. Um, there could be a lot more to it. I believe there are like little classes as well. I'm very tempted to do it. It's in August in Front Royal, Virginia. Um, excuse me, fiber. So I have been thoroughly enjoying myself. I, f I ended up my tour de fleece on my supported spindle. And that'll take me to my next acquisition. I showed you all the picture last week. Here she is. Look at that. It is immaculately beautiful, a thing of gorgeousness. This is my Deerfield Deer Creations lap bowl for my supported spindle. Can I just tell you how relaxed and easy and how much nicer this is than my Pyrex bowl for supported spindling? I have gone to town on the Sakura Poonies, and they are keeping this all in my spindle bag, which was lovingly made by my mother-in-law. There it is. It's, it's, um, it's got padding in it. This is the Gastly's fabric. Have you all seen this? It is just weirdness, but look, there's creepy old ladies knitting. Looks like they're knitting a cat skin or something. And yes, they are knitting incorrectly. Apparently this is how artists think knitting is supposed to look. Um, here they all are having dinner. So I got this fabric at Gather Here when I was there in Cambridge, Mass. Anyway, it's a great little spindle bag. Thank you, Abuela. So here's my Tibetan spindle. I need to... This is my Spanish peacock Tibetan spindle. This rests between my legs. Um, in my lap, and it's just loveliness, and this is all the Sakura I've spun so far. And you can't see how beautiful this pink is on the camera, but yeah, just rest like that. I get a little one of these going. Um, Oh, I should tell you, as I do spin a little here, I should tell you about some weaving I saw at the um, at the Fiber Farmer's Market. There was, oh, and I didn't bring out her card. Shoot. I will definitely bring it out in a minute. Um, excuse me while I join this on. Or if I don't get it today, I'll have to bring it out for next time. Okay. So... I saw this woman had a lot of different bats and she had and they were beautiful but she had something on a small antique table that caught my eye and it was um, weaving and I was just blown away by this particular woven item that she had it was a, something called saori 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 weaving I'm probably not saying that right and it was 15 feet long. It was a wrap that she was selling. And it was 15 feet long. And the warp was made out of just a huge variety of threads. Um, and it was gorgeous. And I Googled it when I got home, and she gave me some tips. There was a Ravelry group. And... Apparently there's a whole philosophy behind the story weaving. It's very individual expression and um, just gorgeous stuff. And it's only about 40, 50 years old, and it was developed in Japan by, by a woman. So that was me, supported spindling a wee bit. I'm not an expert, as you can probably tell. Um, I tend to want to, like, do this and just draft up, up, up. I think you're supposed to do it at an angle like this. 
like um, like this and keep your hand on the spindle the whole time. You don't always follow the rules. Sometimes I just like to do it like this. But I've been trying to improve my technique. So I am going to be, she said you can do celery weaving on a rigid heddle loom, which is what I have. Um, so I'm just going to start looking around for random bits of warp and then random bits of weft. I mean, this, she had bulky roving, ribbon in her weft. You could put, um, a phallus, sorry. It was just unusual and beautiful and I love it. So that is on my list of things to try. Anyway, this whole spinning setup now is Nirvana of supported spindling. So much fun. Okay, I'm going to put this over here so I don't impale the dog if she jumps up. And let's see. Talk to you about my gourmet stash stuff. I will be getting more. I will definitely be getting more. If you haven't tried it, it's, it's beautifully prepped. You can try a little bit for a very reasonable price. Get off my poonies, dog. And... I should name the episode that. Get off my poonies. Um, ooh, that might not sound too good. Anyway, try it. You will not be disappointed. Um, I won some things in Tour de Fleece. Yes, I know you love me, but don't scratch me. And they came in the mail today. I have had an excellent, excellent mail week. I won from Wolf Farms Podcast, a further FO's thread, I won... Um, and Alice loves their lip gloss, if you haven't heard. She loves their world's best coffee lip gloss. My daughter puts it on her. Um, I won a sheep dreamery skein of yarn. So I was able to choose from what they had in the shop, and I chose the acetique base in the colorway Aqualung, and this is an MCN, 238 yards, it's fingering weight. So this could make a great little hat or fingerless mitts. Um, Alice is so bored. It's time for the afternoon nap. How beautiful is that? It's got browns and lavenders and purples and aquas. A little bit of silvery grays in places. So I'm, I'm going to enjoy that. And then from the Tour de Fleece thread on the Mustache podcast, I won some fiber. And it came with, oh look, I have a mustache button. Okay, with a nice little note little mustache cut out. And this is gorgeousness. This is Falkland, four ounces of Falkland from Godiva Yarns. I don't know, I'm not familiar with Godiva Yarns. MySweetSpot2.etsy.com. And I'm gonna enjoy this, right? This is like Neapolitan ice cream. I need to open it up and see, unbraid it and see what the color is like decide how I'll spin it. Um, looks like a beautiful preparation and once I get back on my wheel, because I'm going to be spinning these poonies for a while. Although they do go fast, I have a lot of them and I'm really enjoying it and I just, I haven't touched my wheel since, since last time. I'm just, I'm, I need a break from my wheel. And now that I have this beautiful bowl and this beautiful fiber and this lovely spindle, I'm going to be doing that for a while. Okay. Have we forgotten anything, Alice? I think we're almost done. Um, this Saturday, I have an exciting weekend planned. I'm going to the Metaseld Open House. It's by invitation only, but if you go to metaseldfarm.com, just ask for an invitation because they've advertised it on their blog. But you do have to RSVP, basically, and get directions. You might want to check it out. Um, we are going, we are going to bring a picnic. We are going to pick peaches. Oh, we are going to um, can visit their gardens, their vineyards, their animals. They have peafowl. They have sheep, I think. Alpa both alpaca and llama, although I could be making that up. It's either one or the other or both. Cover my bases. Um, and just lovely people. And I do believe she will have um, their bee products and some fiber products. And I can't wait. Um, should be an awesome little road trip. And that's very exciting. So I might have some things I'm taking with me to, to give to them. All right, so that is happening this Saturday. 
and I just want to talk briefly about one podcast you may or may not know of. It's called the Yarn Raising Podcast. It's by Malia, who's rhymes with Maria, and it's an amazing podcast. She is extremely knowledgeable. She has awesome tools. I love her segments. She has one called The Special Skein, and she just talks about a particular skein of yarn, the story behind it. Um, check it out if you haven't already. Yarn raising, like barn raising, except with yarn. She's traveled all over, and she's really interesting. Got a lot to, um, of knowledge about spindling in particular, but spinning, cool knitting projects. Anyway, I'm enjoying her podcast. I'm enjoying seeing all the SSK recaps. Um, I will be going if I can next year. Um, okay, so next week, will I be here? I don't know. If I do record, it'll be quite late in the week, maybe th Friday. We'll see. Um, I'm going to be going to Newport, Rhode Island, and um, the shore of Connecticut as well. And I'm going to be looking for some souvenir yarn while I'm there. My husband actually said to me, how far is Newport from Webb's? I was like, seriously? Probably two hours? You wanna go? I couldn't believe he brought that up. I've been there once and they had to scrape me off the floor four hours after I walked in. That's how overwhelming it is. So I was amazed that he brought it up again. Um, I would love to go again. But I don't know if it'll be this trip. But I do plan on sourcing me some New England yarn. So whenever I do record, I will hopefully have something new to show you guys. And maybe I definitely a new project to cast on. Um, OK, so you can see that it is time for Al's nap. Alice. <laughs> Hi, darling. You want to go lay down? She's a good girl. All right. So we're going to say goodbye to you guys. We're going to say have a fantastic week. Um, we've had a fantastic week, haven't we, Alice? Yeah? You say bye-bye? You like to go bye-bye in the car, don't you? Okay. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.